Hey, Joe Gilder here. I want to take you on a tour of a new friend of mine, this fella right here, Tricomp. So as far as I can remember, Tricomp has been a part of Studio One since the beginning, or at least for a very, very long time. And I just never messed with it because I didn't quite understand it. And then it got like overhauled and facelifted at some point. Maybe with version 4 or version 5. I don't remember. And I remember looking at it and thinking, oh, that's cool. And then just moving on. I rediscovered it. And I kind of love it. And it kind of gives me goosebumps. So it's included in Studio One. I'm going to drag it onto just the main mix here to show you all the goodness. So first of all, it just looks cool. The old version was just gray and not inspiring. This just makes me want to start grabbing stuff and figuring it out. Um, the name, may, and then looking at the interface, might be a little bit confusing. So I actually emailed back and forth with the developers so they could help me understand it. So this is by no means an exhaustive video on the inner workings of it, but just showing you how I ended up using it for my uh, this current song that I just released. So one thing, if, in case you didn't know, if you press F1 while in a plugin, it should open you up to that section of the manual. Okay. <laughs> It didn't. That's embarrassing. So let's just search for Tri Comp. I think it's under the mastering page. It's considered a mastering processor, which I thought was interesting. I've just used it for mixing. Here it is. Um, so I will. I'll let the developers know. So typically, when you press F1, it should open the manual to the page for that thing, or that's how you search for it if you can't find it. So Tri Comp is a three-band compressor. Provides automatic threshold and ratio settings for all the three bands, and then relative control for the low and high bands, as well as a switchable automatic attack and release controls. So it's kind of meant to be a little more, there's stuff going on under the hood, you don't have complete control, so just use it to be a creative, a creative compression tool. Um, I'm not going to read the rest, you can look at the rest yourself, but... So the idea here is it's a three-band compressor. I like that. When I use multi-band, I typically remove the bottom two bands and just use it as a three-band anyway. But there's a couple of things about this that are interesting. First of all, it has a mix knob, which is means you can make it do parallel processing to keep it kind of chill. Secondly, it has this saturation knob, which is that alone I've really enjoyed just for adding some grit. And then third, the way it works out is you've got a low, mid, and high band of EQ. So there are three bands, and you might think it says three, but then I only see low and high here. What gives? Well, it's this idea of you the, the low band is whatever you set this frequency to, it's that frequency and below. So this current setup is everything below 360. So if I were to have a low band, I'd probably make it something like maybe like 250. By the way, if you hold down shift, you can get things to move very slowly. So it gives you exactly what you want. So 250 and then maybe the high band. That feels pretty close. I might I might make it a little bit more like 3 to 4K, maybe maybe 5K. Also, in case you didn't know, you can type in things like 5K and press return. And it'll go to 5K. It's so smart like that. So then what's happening here? We can obviously increase the input gain into the plugin. But this is just basically increasing the amount of compression on the entire thing. So if we leave these two knobs alone, it's just basically, as far as the way it sounds to my ear, lowering the threshold and increasing the amount of compression across the entire track. But each band, the lows, the mids, and the highs are going to be compressed differently. Let me see if we can, um, just with this current setting, show you how that works. I'm going to hit play, and let's just see what happens. I'm going to do us a favor, and I'm going to turn down that one delay. It's super cool in the song, but it drives me nuts the way it keeps going while I'm trying to make a video. So that, that delay shouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, okay, so interesting, it, it added, like, obviously doing some compression stuff, and we can't necessarily go in and hear, here's what the lows are doing, here's what the mids are doing, like we could with multiband dynamics, which is a multiband compressor that's in Studio One as well. This one's a little more like some stuff's going on under the hood. Let's just see what happens. But what's interesting about it is this is the overall compression that's happening across the entire plugin. And then the low and the high 
are very interesting to me. So what's happening here is this is turning up or down the lows and the highs, but also this is increasing the amount of compression on the lows. So it's kind of doing double duty. It's adding more compression to the low end and also increasing the volume of the low end. So it's turning it up, but also squashing it because you, if you just turn it up, it's just going to be probably too loud. So it's like turning it up and also compressing it. So that's super interesting. This allows us to, this gives us control over the overall compression. So kind of the mids, when you do something like this, where you've got lows, mids, and highs, the mids are typically the bulk of the information. Low end has a lot of energy, but like vocals, guitars, all the instruments sit in the mids usually. So that's the first thing that gets when you use a three band style compressor. Typically, the result is the mids get compressed the most because there's the most inner information there. And so you end up with a little bit of a smiley face EQ curve because the mids get pushed down more than the lows and the highs. And that's not a, necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of what happens. So we could probably hear that here. So yeah, it almost has a sense of the lows and the highs came up a little bit and the mids got pulled down. So we may we may say something like we like when this starts kicking in, we like the sound of that. And obviously it's helpful to just turn things on and off, bypass all day to see how if it's helping or hurting. Okay, it's a little punchier. That's kind of interesting, but it doesn't sound overly processed. Then we might go on and say, mm, I want a little more out of the low end. So we get this sounding good, but now we have a little bit of extra control. So we could say, actually, let's boost the low end a little bit. Listen to like, it's fun, listen to like the bass guitar. We get into this chorus. Listen to what happens when I turn this low end up. We're hearing the bass more, the low frequencies more, but it's almost this sense to me that like it's becoming more prominent, but it's not like crank. It's not like I turned up the bass by five decibels. It's just the low frequencies are bringing brought forward. And probably my guess is that's kind of what I love about this. I don't exactly know being compressed a little bit more. Uh, let's do something with a high end. This is super interesting. So I'm starting to realize why they call this a mastering compressor. Compressor, By the way, uh, you can command click on any parameter and it'll jump back to its default, which is zero, in case you didn't know that. Uh, I'm getting why they call this a mastering compressor because relative high compression amount. So because when I turn this all the way up, it's still kind of maintaining the overall balance that's there. It's just you can hear it on specifically the snare. As I turn this up, the snare starts to get snappier and snappier, i.e. more compressed, and the overall high frequencies are more prominent, but it's not like a big old honking boost with an EQ. That would be way too much, especially on a master on an entire mix like this. Super duper interesting to me. What happens if I crank the compression and then let's just see. That's obviously way too much, but even it, even then it was way too much and the low end was a little out of control and I wanted more highs so I could compress the crap out of it and then relatively bring the lows and the highs down a little bit. So we're kind of adjusting the maybe the threshold of the lows and the highs, but it's also doing something with the makeup gain as well so that they still maintain their rough balance. That is so interesting to me. Um, there's more controls over here we're not going to get into, but here's one I want to show you the saturation. I use this Honestly, I probably used it in the dumbest way. The developer is probably going to facepalm when they see how I used it. But on this vocal track, I added tricomp early in the chain, and I mostly just used it for the saturation. Listen to, let me see if I can get a good spot for you. If I had to do it again, I would. So that's the vocal. Here it is without tricomp. So it's got a little bit of whoop whoop 
to it, a little low end woofiness, um, and it's a little clean. If I had to do it again, do it again. I'm pushing, and but my voice isn't like distorting. I wanted it to have some grit, like I'm singing through like an old console or something like that. Guess who gives us that? Try comp. Listen to it. If I had to do it again, I would. It's got this kind of grit to it. Check out what happens when we crank the saturation. It's called saturation, but once you go up past like 20%, it just it's just straight up grit and it's glorious. If I had to do it again, I And it's, there's no other controls. If you want a lot of control over your distortion, use red light distortion because it has all the different parameters. You can adjust low frequencies, high frequencies, all that. This is just, it's kind of been pre-decided for you. Kind of like if you were to run this through an old console, you can't tell the console how to distort. You can just kind of adjust how much level goes into it. Um, but it distorts in a way that feels really useful because it's more and more, as the higher I go, there's more like high frequency distortion, which is kind of what you want. If I Super, super interesting. And you can imagine, you could try this on all kinds of stuff. What do I put this on my drums? Try comp. Let's do it. Disgusting, but now let's just mix it in with the original. Or we decide we don't want any of the actual compression to happen. We just want to distort it and see what happens. bonkers super cool by the way in case you didn't know whenever you see this little logo state space that's like the technology that we use to build analog circuits inside of a plug-in in studio one so it's literally instead of like a typical way you would model something is you run a signal through it and you you know what the original signal sound like sounds like and then you kind of measure how the signal is different so Take the original signal, combine it with the new signal, flip the polarity of one of them, and everything that you hear is kind of what was added to the sound. Sort of. I've never done it, but that's my imagination of how it works. This, so that's taking almost like an impulse response of the piece of equipment. This is different. This is actually taking a piece of equipment and then pulling it apart to see what the different components are and then modeling each of those components. So this transistor, this capacitor, I don't know any other words for electronics, and then putting it together literally in this like breadboard, digital breadboard modeler that now models each component. And then the, the end result is something that sounds and behaves a lot more like the original um, and gives it a more natural sort of a sound. Now with this one, there's just one knob to control it. But when you get into things like red light distortion, which has even more controls and a bunch of different models, you can start to see... Actually, I don't know if Red Light Distortion uses the state space modeling. It might be some of the other plugins. Anyway, forget I said that. Forget the last 10 seconds of this video. Anyway, just wanted to show you that because I think that's super interesting. And um, I think it's just cool the way things are developed inside of Studio One. Let me delete this Red Light Distortion send I accidentally created because that would be useful for no one. Uh, all right, so if you have not used Tricomp, go try it out. Try it out on all your basic stuff. Drums, bass, vocals keyboards i can think it'd be really cool on like a hard organ probably on your electric guitar bus or individual electric guitar tracks that need a little more grit it's not like this is now the only tool you're going to use for distortion it's just studio one gives you options different ways to achieve sounds and just to have fun for me it was fun just having this plugin as like a new tool to use in fact i used it on this song i produced for a friend he sat down in front of a pair of microphones and he played, he literally just played his hand on his lap. So it sounds like this. It 
So it's just him playing his lap and it's stereo because there were two microphones. So I just said, well, I just want to make it kind of fun. So I threw Tricomp on there and distorted it. And kind of compressed it. Then I added a chorus to it. Using the doubler mode. It just makes it just on top of everything else that was happening. It ended up being kind of a cool vibe. Anyway, so I've been using Tricomp in all sorts of situations. And it's been glorious. I think you should try it too. All right, see ya.